Let's see an example of simple harmonic motion by an oscillating spring. The spring is compressed at 2 cm from equilibrium position and then released to allow for oscillation. As you can see, the spring is oscillating from maximum amplitude to equilibrium position to minimum amplitude to equilibrium position to maximum position again, repeatedly. This matches the pattern of the sine curve. Hence, if the y axis is labeled as displacement x and x axis is labeled as time t, we can denote the equation for simple harmonic motion as x is equals to a sine omega t, where x is displacement. A is amplitude and omega t is the phase. We then can use this equation to derive the equation of simple harmonic motion for its velocity, acceleration, kinetic energy, and potential energy. Let's derive the equation of velocity for simple harmonic motion. We have the equation of displacement for simple harmonic motion as x is equal to a sine omega t plus psi. Since the velocity is the rate of change of displacements, hence we're going to have a omega cos omega t plus psi. There is trigonometric equation that is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equals to 1. We got to rearrange that, hence we have cos theta is equals to square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. Hence, we're going to have cos omega t plus psi is equals to square root of 1 minus sine squared omega t plus psi. Just now, we have the equation of V as A omega cos omega t plus psi. Hence, we can substitute cos omega t plus psi as square root of 1 minus sine squared omega t plus psi. From the equation of displacement, we can rearrange this equation into x over a is equals to sine omega t plus psi. And then, we can substitute this into the equation of velocity. Hence, we're going to have v is equals to a omega square root 1 minus x over a squared. When we square both sides, we're going to have v squared is equals to a squared omega squared times a squared over a squared minus x squared over a squared. As we cancel out the a squared, we're going to left with v squared is equals to omega squared times a squared minus x squared. And then lastly, we have v is equals to plus minus omega square root a squared minus x squared. Hence, if we want the equation of velocity in terms of time, so this is the equation of velocity in terms of time. If we want the velocity in terms of displacement, so this is the equation of velocity in terms of displacement. Now, let's derive the equation of acceleration for simple harmonic motion. Just now, we have the equation of velocity as a omega cos omega t plus psi. And we know that the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Hence, we're going to have negative a omega squared sine omega t plus psi. As we compare to the equation of displacement, x is equals to a sine omega t plus psi. So, we're going to have a is equals to negative omega squared x. Hence, if we want the equation of the acceleration in terms of time t, so this is the equation. If we want the equation in terms of displacement x, so this is the equation of the acceleration in terms of displacement. Now, we will derive the equation of kinetic energy. Since we have the kinetic energy as half mv squared and the velocity for simple harmonic motion as omega squared root a squared minus x squared. So just substitute that into the equation of kinetic energy. Lastly, we're going to end up with the kinetic energy as half m omega squared times a squared minus x squared. Lastly, we will derive the equation of potential energy. Potential energy u is equals to half kx squared. In the system of mass and spring, if the spring is extended or compressed, there is restoring force where it is a force that the spring exerted in order to move the object back to its equilibrium position. This is known as Hooke's law where we have Fs is equals to negative kx where k is the spring constant, x is the displacement and the negative sign indicates that the restoring force is always opposite to the direction of motion. Newton's law, we have total force is equal to Ma. Since the only forces acted on the object is the restoring force, so Fs is equal to Ma and negative Kx is equal to Ma. And then we have A is equal to negative Kx over M. As we compare to the equation of simple harmonic motion, we have A is equal to negative omega squared X. Hence, we will have omega squared is equal to K over M. As we rearrange, we're going to have K is equal to M omega squared. Then, we will substitute this equation into the equation of potential energy. And lastly, we're going to have the potential energy of simple harmonic motion as half m omega squared x squared.
Last but not least, we also want to discuss on what is the relationship between total simple harmonic motion energy and amplitude. In the simple harmonic motion of the mass and spring system, there are no dissipative forces. So the total energy is the sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy. In this section, we consider the conservation of energy of the system. Since the total energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy, hence we also have half m omega squared a squared minus x squared plus half m omega squared x squared. As we expand, we're going to have half m omega squared a squared minus half m omega squared x squared plus half m omega squared x squared. And up, the total energy will become half m omega squared a squared or half k a squared, where k is equals to m omega squared. As we can see from the equation, the E is directly proportional to A squared. Hence, we can conclude that the total mechanical energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is directly proportional to the square of amplitude. 